Well, hello everyone, this is CJ with Cycletron. Today I'm gonna to do the first oil change on my 2023 Gen 3 Hayabusa. So what I like to do is get all the tools lined out. With a filter change, it's supposed to take 3.6 quarts. So I have the filter, I have the crush ring, got all my tools laid out. So the first thing we're gonna do is take the cowling pieces off and then I'm gonna warm the bike up and then drain the oil. So on this center cowling piece, there's four of these plastic fasteners, one on each side of the radiator and then two underneath. And then we gotta get this side cowl, this lower side cowl off, so that's probably five millimeter Allen head there. And then there's tabs where the, the piece just pulls out. So we'll do that first. All right, so I got that center under cowling off. That was a little tricky. I had to get the right lower panel loose by undoing this bolt here, which is a five millimeter bolt, and then pop that out. So it'll probably be a good time to clean that while it's off the bike. I'm gonna clean it in the kitchen sink since it's about 39 degrees out here today. All right, so I got the side panel off. I went ahead and took this little Phillips head screw off right there, which uh, holds a tab for that lower center cowling. So I took that out and then you gotta be real careful pulling these tabs out. Support the upper piece while you pull the lower piece so you don't crack your ABS. So the reason why I gotta take this right side lower panel off is to access the oil filter here. All right, so before I do my warm up, right before draining the oil, make sure I could get my wrench on here and turn it, which I can. And also look into where the drain bolt's at, which is right here, 17 millimeters. So I've got my socket all ready to go. So let's warm it up. All right, so I've got 623 miles on this bike. The recommended first service is a little 600 miles, so I'm right there. Certainly don't want to keep riding without that first oil change. So I'm just starting the bike. I'm gonna let it warm up for a few minutes to help the oil drain. All right, so I'm gonna let it warm up till the temperature gauge starts to move up, which is what it's doing now, and that's good. I'm just gonna let it drop in the pan versus trying to catch it with that hot oil coming out. There we go. So let it drain. I always seem to do this on a windy day. So while it's draining there, I'm gonna remove the oil filler plug so it's not trying to pull a vacuum as it drains. Let that run out. Well, since I let the drain plug drop in there, I'm just gonna fish it out with my little magnetic tool here. There we go. Let that oil drain off. So I got my vice grips on here, make sure I don't hit the threads. I can unscrew that. I'm just going to unscrew that carefully. All right. So I got the old crush washer off of there. I'm going to put the new one on. Put the new one back on. Just like that. And a few metallic pieces that got caught by the magnet on the drain plug. Okay, just gently thread it back in, make sure you don't cross thread it. Should spin in easily. All right. Wipe off any excess oil here. Just gonna slide this out of the way long enough to tighten up that drain bolt. This is where a torque wrench would come in handy. You just don't want to get too crazy with it. Nice and snug. 
press that uh, crush washer and we're good. Now I had a oil filter wrench that supposedly fits the Suzuki filter, but I can't find it. So I got one of these. So I'll do that one. Oh yeah, before I do that, I'm gonna put some paper towels or a piece of cardboard underneath just so I don't get a bunch of oil on my exhaust pipes that's gonna burn off later. It'll give you a lot of room to get these filters out. All right, get the old filter out. Let that drain out. Some more paper towels in there. Let that drain for a bit. All right, so I got the new filter here. You wanna make sure you get this plastic off, which should be fairly obvious, but you hear stories where people forget to take that off. The other thing we're gonna do is take a drop of the old oil. I think it's the first time I've ever worn gloves doing like I always forget until after I'm done to put gloves on, but really uh, used motor oil is not a good thing to have in contact with your skin. So we're just gonna lube that gasket up. Now, I know some people will pre-fill their filter with a little bit of oil. I think that's not necessary. Also tends to make a mess when you try and put the filter back on. I'm gonna try and clean up some of this oil before I put that filter back on. A lot more drip down than I would have liked. All right, so I get this on. Again, make sure we're not gonna cross thread it. So we're gonna run it in just until the gasket makes contact with the, uh, the case of the engine. And then it's two full turns after first contact this is where you're gonna stop tightening it. Okay, there's contact right there. Take that off. Now, I'm gonna mark the filter here where it says oil filter. My eye level, you won't be able to quite see it, but I'll mark it. So when I see that rotate twice, then we're gonna call it good. There's our first rotation. Dang, you can almost do it by hand all the way. I used to just do it till it was tight by hand and then go to about a quarter to a half after that. You don't want to go too crazy. Let's see how far it goes. That was hand tight to there. That's pretty tight. I don't think it quite made it twice around. It's pretty close. There we go. That's that's good. I don't want to make it crazy tight. Alright, we'll wipe everything down again. 
All right, so we're gonna pour the used oil. I've got a five gallon bucket and then I drive over to O'Reilly's. They'll take it for free and recycle it. When I was a kid, common practice after you changed the oil was to take the used oil and pour it on the weeds along the fence line. Of course, you never want to do that these days. It's kind of crazy. I'm seeing a lot of metal pieces in the oil, which you'd expect, particularly after the first oil change. By the way, the Suzuki oil filter for this Gen 3 Hayabusa is part number 16510-07J00. Now, the next thing I like to do is I like to stage all the oil so I don't lose track of how much I put back into the engine. So, 3.6, so we know it's gonna take a full three and then we'll pay close attention to when we put the half, roughly, of the last bottle in. So we're using uh, 10W40 full synthetic, the R9000 from Suzuki. These funnels never seem to support themselves because there's always something in the way past the fill hole. So it's kind of a two-handed operation. That's why it's good to keep the other bottles of oil close so that you don't have to take the funnel out until you're done placing all the oil back in. All right, so I'm gonna put the empties off to my right. Full ones are behind me so I can keep track of what's what. Always make a mess. So 0.6 times 32 is 19 ounces, which will leave 13 ounces. So I'm going to pour this till I'm down to 13 ounces. And I'm going to start the bike look for leaks and then I'll put the fairing back on. Whatever you do is you don't want to overfill the crankcase. There it is. 13 ounces left so it's 19 in. Put my cap back on. And before I start it I'm going to get soapy towel and wipe off this oil that I managed to get over the side of my bike. Alright. Some warm soapy water. Clean up the mess I made here. Put my filler cap back on. I'll clean this up. Then I'm gonna start it, check for leaks, then check check the level. So at this point, I've drained out the old oil, replaced the filter, replaced and tightened the drain plug, and refilled it with oil. So manual says to Warm the bike up for three minutes on the side stand, then set the bike upright and check to see where the oil level is in the inspection window. So we'll do that. All right, so while it's warming up, I'm just gonna look for any leaks. Not seeing anything. Because obviously I wanna catch if there's any leaks before I replace the body panels. Burning off the excess oil that dropped down on the pipes when I was changing the filter. All right, well, I had some audio issues, but uh, let the bike warm up for three minutes, shut it off for three minutes, then leveled the bike up here to see where the oil level was indicated in the inspection window. You want it to be about midpoint in the inspection window, which this is, so we're good. Okay, everyone, please let me know if you have any comments or questions about this procedure. Thanks for watching, and please stay tuned for future videos.